Yeah, hello everybody. Welcome to the second part of our Type uh, 3 Fluid Template Data Processing Tutorial. My name is Joey. I will um, lead you to the next uh, roughly one hour, depending on how many questions you might have and how many problems we might solve that you will um, tell us about uh, in, the Slack uh, in the Slack channel or in the chat here or uh, via direct call-in. Um, We'll try to um, just get into more details uh, about the stuff that we uh, showed you last time about the data processing. So I would just give a rough overview of what we did in our uh, first um, session and then we can go into the more advanced uh, features of the data processing stuff, nested stuff and even grid elements. So if you are interested in the more basic uh, stuff then you should uh, watch uh, the video from two weeks ago because last week I have been ill, so uh, we, I was not able to stream because my voice was completely gone. So sorry for the delay, but um, I think we will get into a more um, in a better schedule so that we ha will have roughly a weekly um, tutorial about several things. Next one will be up at Thursday, where we'll, we will start with a completely new series about how to build a Type of 3 site package from scratch. So um, now let's get to the data processing stuff. As you might remember, we have a website used as an example where we have um, several menus in there. And um, I showed you in the, in the last session about the basics of the data processing fl of fluid template, how this will be done. So we will just go to that part. As you can see, we have um, a fluid template object. In that fluid template object, we have a template name, we have the template root path, the partial root path, layout root path, and so on. That's the basic stuff. And we have data processing, which is done for, uh, for example, just uh, having references of uh, media, or if uh, we want to have a main navigation, we have a menu processor, we have files processor, all that stuff. And now let's go to a bit more complex situations. For example, we have not just uh, simple menus in here, where we will just add uh, an image or maybe um, have the text on uh, and the title of a page. But for example, we have teaser menus. And as you can see, those teaser menus um, consist of an image, um, a title, and some additional information, and they are still created uh, with data processors. So when you go to that window now, just close down the Chrome, and we go to the teaser navigation, you can see that we have a menu processor, and the menu processor is then creating a directory menu, and the directory menu, menu is always done with a level UID minus one. Remember from the last session, minus one is the current page. So everything you see will be a menu of pages, which are sub pages to the current page. Uh, we will use the title field of that page. We will use it as a teaser navigation. So this will be the variable name that we will use in the uh, fluid template later on. And then you can see we have a data processor on the next level, which is something I showed you roughly last time. Um, but this time um, we will go into a bit more details here. So let's see what we do here. We have the menu of pages. Then we go to the field media of a particular page of that menu because everything we do in the second level data processor will always be connected to the record that has been fetched with the menu processor already so we have basically we have a for each loop and within the for each loop all of these each of these records will be enhanced by additional information so we will have um, a references um, processor files processor which is using the field media and then it creates uh, some references uh, which will be uh, having the default name uh, which is files. 
then we will add something which is called teaser content, which is basically the first content element on that particular page, which ha is having a call post zero. And um, there we, for we use the PID in list here, which is the field UID of the page of that menu. So when we do a select of something which has a PID in list with a UID of the current page, this is the content element of that particular page. Same goes for a uh, submenu, which is then added here where we can have a calendar navigation, which is even more sub than the other sub. So in, uh, it's again another level deeper. Uh, and this again can have references and field names. So when we go to the, um, to the navigation and fill in some debug output here and upload that, then should see some debug output. As you can see, we have different things here. We have the page, we have the language switch, we have the footer navigation, the sub navigation, and the main navigation. And since this is a very special uh, element, we need to go to another part here because this is not just the main navigation, but we are in the teaser navigation section, which is a bit more down here. You can use several outputs here just to be on the safe side. I will just fill in some more debug outputs. Should be enough already. Okay, and now I can reload the page and we should see the teaser navigation exactly. It's here. So as you can see, there are seven items in the teaser navigation. And when we go back to the PHP Storm window, and to the TypeScript code. We have the teaser navigation and we should expect some files per element and some teaser content and maybe even some calendar navigation if it's available. So when we go back to the Chrome window now, you can see an item here. We have files here. We have data here of that item and we have categories. So this is another teaser navigation. So let's go to another teaser item. Okay, so as you can see, we have two levels here with uh, another uh, level here, which is categories, and the categories are then created um, as sub items. So when we look for that in the type of script, you can see we have another categories processor here, and this is then added as another level of the um, query processor uh, um, it of the data processing, so it is using a database query processor, sorry. So this is created over here. And when we no go uh, now go to um, a completely other page, we will have some more things to see here. Um, maybe we go to the publications here, then to the blog posts, and then we should use another navigation here. We have, for example, the navigation HTML. I will just show you in PHP Storm where we will find that. Blog overview.
No. It's like this. Okay. Should be visible here now too. Yeah, for example, here we have this browser navigation. And as you can see, there are lots of items in here and the items still have additional fields like files, like teaser content. And within the teaser content, there is a data of a content element. So actually what we are doing here is, I just have to activate the Chrome window so you can see it. Um, so what we are doing here is we fetch the page first, the data of the page will be available in this array. So everything you need about uh, pages and uh, menu items themselves is available here. And we have some additional uh, things that are rendered by the menu processor like title, link to that page so that you can directly use that in uh, your Fluid template. We have the target and if, it's th if the page is active or current or whatever. And then we have the additional field files, which has been created by the um, references um, processor. And we have the field teaser content, which actually contains the first content element of a particular page. I can show you in the back end how this is structured so that you can get a better idea. What we actually see is a menu of sub pages of this particular page, which is creating this um, navigation. So we have the browse navigation, then we have um, the pages which are sub pages of this page. And for example, the first one is key factor motivation. And now you can see that this is containing um, several elements and the elements are now fetched with the next level of the data processor. So when you go to the PHP storm and to the TypeScript. And to the teaser content. You can see how this is working. This is um, the first level, which is creating um, the menu. Then we have the second level, which is creating the uh, media entry, the, uh, the files entry, and this is creating the teaser content. So we have several levels um, that we are using in the front end and we fetch all the data within a single uh, data processor. So this creates a menu. Basically it's a menu, it's a, it's a teaser menu. And when we now close that again, you can see a bit more of it. And this is showing the first page. And additionally, below that page, we have this navigation, which is then created in the Fluid template. So the uh, cool thing about this is that you even can hand over data to a Fluid template. And within the Fluid template, you can then use a pagination widget. We'll show you in PHP Storm how this is working. We have, for example, this one. So you get in the whole array, which is the teaser navigation. You remember, this is the one up here. In this case, it's the browse navigation, but it doesn't matter. Actually, it's, it's just a variable name. So you get in a variable containing all the menu items. And then you can have a for each loop but the for each loop is just rendering a specific part of this um, nav whole navigation. So you have this um, as a sub level of the widget paginate. So the widget paginate gets the teaser navigation as objects. Then it runs over them with uh, paginated items. And in the configuration, you can just tell it 
um, the pagination widget, how many items per page you want, um, if you want uh, to insert it above or below, um, the maximum number of links and uh, all these things. So it will automatically create um, the pagination of this menu so that you can browse through the items even though they might not have been um, pages or other things. So it doesn't matter if they are uh, records or pages or um, other data. Actually, uh, you could even provide um, an array of comma-separated values that you will uh, process somehow and then fill into the Fluid template at that part. So you can actually create um, paginations for almost everything that can be provided via an array this way. So I think this is uh, something that's already um, quite interesting about um, the approach of data processors. So um, the next step will be to go uh, even a level further and do that with a lot of content elements. So let's have a look at that. When we go back to another page, for example, we go to the people section and within the people section there is, for example, leadership. And within leadership you can see we have an element which is a kind of kind of a slider. So when you click on several pictures of the persons here, you will get um, the text which belongs to that person. And when we go to the back end, I can show you how this has been created. We have the experts here, and we have, for example, this element, which is basically a refactored um, insert records element. And within this element, you can see that we have different records uh, in here. The reason is that we uh, will use all these personal profiles in several sections. For example, there might be people who are in the expert section and in the leadership section or maybe in other sections um, on a completely different part of the page. So we, will can, we can reuse um, the items um, provided in here. And this is why we um, went for insert records element here. So the records themselves are based on grid elements. And as you can see, there's a container, and the container has two fields, one for the profile, one for the links. And um, you can insert a maximum of three links here and a maximum of one profile here. And then you can edit um, this whole profile container. And we are doing this in a specific setup here. And as you can see, this is a profile slider. And the profile slider is using a fluid template. And on the first level, we have data processing. Um, this one is just um, a helper, which is creating the profile sorting because uh, the data is stored in a comma separated list within the records element, so we need some uh, helper to um, do, this, do the sorting. And this is the interesting part where we get uh, the database query processor, which is um, giving us content elements, which are always coming from PID in list 71 in this case. PID in list is um, the page where you uh, pr uh, provided the containers for these elements. And then we have the variable name, which is as profiles. Within the profiles, we ag can again use a database query processor, which is the uh, approach with core 
methods because the core is not providing any grid elements uh, related processors and we built this before the grid elements um, children processor has been finished. So this was the old school way of doing it. So we have um, a query processor that gets content elements. We have another query processor that will uh, get um, the links and the content and the file. So we have a content element and within that content element we get the image. And then we have another content element which is providing the actual content, which is ex actually the same thing here. So we could have done it in a different way but uh, just providing image and content within the same record. Um, and the last one uh, will provide the links. So we have this one here. They are all database query processors which are creating a query on the second level of the first database query processor. So we, we will have a query and then a query, a query and a query, which is quite a lot. So maybe there is another way of doing this but this is the first approach that we had and I will show you another option later. So let's go back to the Chrome window and provide some debug output here as well. Okay. Let's see if it's working. Yep. As you can see, there is a lot of debug output now here. So we have um, the profiles, we have the data, and we have the profile sorting. But since there are several uh, of these profile sliders on the same page, um, we have the debug output uh, repeated here. So actually, you can see there are different um, arrays of data here. So let's go to the profile sorting, which is just providing uh, the record number and um, is it's just providing the key here so we can sort that. And the actual profiles are in here. So we will find the profiles here. We have the image of the profile, we have the content of the profile, we have the links. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And of course we have the data. So actually this one, is, uh, as you can see, is the container for um, a guy named Christian Bünning. And this container contains an image, a content and a link, actually two links. And when you now open the next level, you can see that this is containing the data. So we have the file here. We have some data here. And as you can see, this is redundant. So we can re could have rebuilt that so that we can get rid of a, an additional query. But this is just an example because the life site is, has been, of course, rebuilt uh, with um, more modern approaches. But this is just a demo server that we still have in use to show you how the data processing is working. So when we go to the links, you can see here is the Xing link and the next one is the LinkedIn link. Same goes for um, other profiles. So when we just open the next level, we will just have other profiles of the other people. So we have six profiles in this slider and maybe yeah, just two profiles in the other. And if I just remove the debug output again, you can see that this is actually true. So we have six guys over here. We have another one with two guys here and when you now go to another tab you can see that there are always two guys in here and we have even more people here. So this is why we had a large number of profiles in here. So let's go back to the profile page. 
as you can see these are grid elements and some of you might have noticed that there is another approach how to deal with grid children in the grid elements container i just gave a short introduction to that Ah, I just see there is a question. Standard pagination widget does not seem to work on arrays due to missing controller context. Is there any special workaround? It will display the pagination, but not effect when clicking on page two, for example. Um, the point is, I, I just have to, uh, to find out if I will find it immediately. But the point is that you have to simulate um, the setting for the extension. I don't know exactly if it w has been done in here, but I remember we had some um, settings that we added so that um, the um, pagination widget will think there is a controller. I will try to find it now. If it's taking too long, maybe we can um, move that to the question and answer section later on. No. Ah, we have here something, or is this just the uh, XXBase view widget uh, template root path? Um, I will try to find it later uh, so we can um, show you how this is working, or maybe I can answer that in the comments section later on when uh, the video has been finished and I um, found out how we d actually did it. So let's go back to the um, to the grid element stuff. So we have a personal profile. The personal profile is created uh, with a text media and a header. And we have this um, personal profile type of script here, which is uh, creating um, this one. And then we have another type of script section that was creating the profile slider. So what we did is we had a first level processor over here, which is just creating um, um, yeah, a kind of array of grid elements containers. And then we have additional data processing for all of this stuff. And now let's try to find out what happens when we replace that with the grid elements processor. Therefore, I go to the grid elements section because I'm too lazy to just write that. And as you can see, there is another s uh, another section in here. I just have to go to the window without the cam so that you can even see the directory structure. Um, we added a new folder, data processing lib content element. This is uh, due to the fact that I had a discussion with uh, Benjamin Cott about how to mm, yeah, make it less complex and complicated uh, for people so that they will be actually able to deal with the data processing of grid elements themselves. We had the, the old one, which is uh, already available with Type 3 version 9 um, and uh, grid elements version 9.0. This is a new one which will be um, available soon, which is already available in the Git master. So when you go to the setup, you can see we have a grid elements ch grid children processor and we can do something here and then go to the other type of script. Just close that again. And we have the personal profile type of script. No, that's the profile slider type of script. So we will just copy the part over here. And there should be something visible in the profile slider HTML already. Okay, let's go back to the Chrome window. Just flush some caches. 
to be on the safe side. And now let's see if there is some debug output. Yep. As you can see, the second level, which is now provided by another processor, has changed. So what we did is that we added the processor on the second level. The first level is still providing the profiles and the second level is now created by the grid elements processor. And when we go back to the window without the cam, I can show you what happens here. We have the profiles, so we have still six profiles. It's exactly the same thing, but we have some data in here and then we have children. So what you get is the data of the grid elements container, which is already available here. So we have still Christian Böning and the container. And then we have children and we have options. So as you can see, the options used here have been sorting direction is ascending, sorting field is sorting, recursive is disabled, um, flex form data will be resolved, um, the backend layout will be resolved and we will respect columns and respect rows. So when we now go to the children section, there's one child, which is UID 409, and the data is in here. Now we have the maximum depth, uh, so we cannot open that anymore, but I guess you can imagine that this is TT content data. We have the same thing here. And as you can see, we have elements 406 and 407. So what you can see is this is the structure that has, that has been resolved by the grid elements um, data processor. We have the row one, we have row two, we have column zero and column one. And inside we have item 409, 406, 407 and the data. So when we go back to the back end and we go to Christian Bünning. Was it Christian Bünning? I don't remember exactly. You can see we have a number of elements here. We have the column number here. This is the other column number. So we have actually rows and columns because this is the row and each row contains um, a column. So we have row uh, one and row two and within these there are the columns. Actually, this is resembling the stuff that we have created in the profile slider TS config. So maybe we can go to that. Page TS, grid elements, person profile. So we have text media, which is in row one. The column number is zero and we have row two and the column number is one. So this is the structure that we are getting in the front end. Same thing here. If you don't need that, you can now reconfigure the output by TypeScript. So let's get back to PHP Storm and to the TypeScript setting. This is why I left the profile slider, uh, the, the commands in here when com uh, copying the stuff to the profile slider. As you can see, we can now go to the options. And for example, we can disable respect rows and we won't resolve the flex from data. Or maybe we can just leave that so that we can check if it has uh, happened or not. And we will go to another sorting and maybe we will sort by title and descending. Don't know if it makes sense. Doesn't matter currently, it's just an example. So. There should be no rows anymore. We have the sorting direction and the sorting field change and we should see that in the options when we open um, the debug output. So let's see 
if that happens. Ow. I think we have a problem here because maybe the sorting cannot be done by title because there is no title. Because of course the sorting field entity content is header. So let's see if it's working now. Yeah. Okay, we get the profiles. We get an array. We get the options. As you can see, sorting, header, disk ending, and we don't respect rows anymore. So when you go to the children array now, you will directly see the columns. And no rows anymore. So when you go to the fluid template, you don't have to take care of these rows because maybe you have a backend layout where they are just columns and just a single row and uh, having a row in the array would just be too much. Um, so you can just skip the rows. You can even skip the columns. Basically, it's the same thing here. So you can respect columns zero and then we should not see any columns anymore. Okay, go to the front end, check the output. We got the profiles. And in there, there are the children. And within the children, you just see the UIDs of the content elements. So depending on the situation um, that you have with your containers, if you have really uh, highly structured containers with lots of rows and columns and stuff like that, you will go for rows and columns enabled so that you can distinguish them. And if you don't need them, you can just skip them. And when we go back to the fluid templates now, you can see how we deal with that in the grid element itself. Because grid element is providing some default templates and layouts for that. As you can see, oh, we don't need the language, we just need th these parts. And as you can see, we have the default template, which is the one that was provided with the old ones. And now we have another one, which is actually providing the new structure. In this case, you can see we just have a grid element. The grid element is providing the container. So it has a section main and the section main um, will go and render the partial named container. So when you go to the container, you can now check, just close this a little bit down. We can now check um, if there has been an option respect columns and if inside the uh, options respect columns, we should even respect rows. And depending on the setting, we will go to another partial. If there was no option to respect columns, then we will go to the children part and directly render the children. So we have three different partials. Let's start with the rows. It's quite simple. We provide the rows as a variable here. We have a for each loop providing the columns and the row number. And then we can render a div ID C data UID row number give it a class or whatever. This is just the default example template of grid elements. Of course, you can do much more uh, sophisticated stuff within your fluid templates. So when we now go, to, uh, go to the um, next part, which would be actually the same partial that we had called when we just disabled respect rows. So go to the columns, 
partial actually is the same thing. We have the variable columns, and then we have the um, for each loop, and we provide some information about the UID of the column and uh, other things, and then we can render the children. So next step would be to render the children actually. And in this case, we have another condition, and this condition is taking care of the um, feature that I did not actually enable, because we have no second level containers in here, but actually it will do something with a JavaScript here when we would enable this one and give it a one then the grid elements children processor will even fetch children of the next level and if we go and give it a four you will get a whole structure of maybe a multi-column container containing um, what we saw the the tabs within the tabs we have the profile slider and within the profile slider we have the actual sliding element it's not yeah, it, it's not recommended to have a very highly nested structure because in most of the cases um, for the front-end users it will be um, more or less the same uh, complication than you will, uh, that you will see in the back-end, but at least four levels sometimes happen on several pages. So the approach here is to just provide all the data within just one go and within all the levels so that you can then provide um, just one fluid template to deal with them in a similar way. So you can still go to the container, you can go render rows and columns, within the rollums, uh, columns you will render the child and within the children section you can now decide, okay, is there a condition children, then I will render another container and of course this doesn't have to be the same container. You can have several sections and several partials that call each other. Um, and if there are no children anymore, then you can render the default TypeScript path, which is DT content data C type. So you can still render text, text and image, media, and other um, elements. But as soon as there is a grid elements container within a grid elements container, maybe even still within a grid elements container, you can take care of that and get the children of that container too. So this will pr uh, give you the option to have either one large fluid template dealing with all this um, kind of stuff within um, nested for each loops or provide some partials like shown in the grid elements examples and these examples um, just give you um, yeah, a, a possibility to find out how to deal with partials in a proper way because it makes sense to provide several partials here because you have redundant stuff actually and the partials could call each other um, even uh, when you ha have them on several levels. So you can call a container, within the container you call the child, within the child you call the container. So um, the nested structure will still be there, but you will have less redundant code within um, your master fluid template. So basically that's it for now. Um, so the question is if there are any questions in the chat or um, anywhere else because if not maybe I can just give you some overview about the upcoming uh, things um, on Thursday we will start with our new uh, series about um, how to create a side package from scratch it will be um, I, maybe I can show you the preview in the Chrome window. Twitch, Coders Care. Go to.
to the section over here. Uh, this one will be about Petro Likes Cooking. Petro Likes Cooking will be a blog page that we will create from scratch based on a template that we actually bought for it. Um, so you will see how to implement templates and uh, other things within your site package and how to um, use that site package to actually install the whole type of three and extensions and every uh, other thing around uh, that you need um, for this. I think this will be a series. So we will just have about 30 minutes um, per episode. And after that, you will have a fully fledged website with all the features that will be in here. This is uh, one of the things that we are doing. The other thing will be um, that we want to provide um, question and answer uh, sessions where you can ask uh, to solve your problem, for example, we have stuff that we find on uh, Stack Overflow, or maybe you just have questions that you asked in the Facebook group or uh, on Twitter or wherever else. And uh, if that happen, um, we can help you just to provide the type of three community uh, that is actually quite helpful with enough information, maybe via Stack Overflow or via Slack and other things. And we will lead you to the process of creating um, the Stack Overflow questions and Maybe we can even answer them immediately. If not, we will try to uh, find people who can help you. So this will be another format that we will be, will be presenting soon. So if there are no questions left and nobody um, who has problems with the stuff that we presented, um, let me say thank you for, ah, there is something. If you can point me to the code where you set a controller context, that would be great. Okay, let's see. Um, Go to the PHP Storm again and maybe just close all that TypeScript stuff. If I remember correctly, it was in the TypeScript section and maybe we just put it somewhere else because it's in, a, in the helper functions, lib inside it, but no, this is just other thing. Ah, here we have that. Take a look at this part. As you can see, we have a gallery teaser in here, which is using a fluid template. And the gallery teaser is, since it's a gallery and the gallery is quite large in this, uh, in this project, um, the gallery is using a paginator too. So if you have a gallery teaser with a fluid template and you give the fluid template some X base variables here, you can give it a plugin name, a controller name, a controller extension name, and a controller action name. And as you can see, the extension name is not really there. There is no extension named core. And um, the controller action is not actually um, available too, but still you can use this to generate uh, some um, URL variables that will be then used by the Fluid template um, widget to get you to the right page. So let's see if we can get some example on the page where there was a gallery. If I remember correctly, this should be in the insights section. And this was in the about part. Yeah, there's insights. Yeah, as you can see, we have several galleries here and we have the pagination widget here. And now if we click on that link, we should get additional parameters up here, which is widget galleries, current page is two, and um, this is something that we provide to this uh, widget. So when we go back to the type of script, you can see here are, is a plugin name paginate core and index. And this is um, just simulating the stuff here. So we will get um, some parameters in here and the parameters then will be um, 
pointed to the fake um, XBase plugin, and this fake XBase plugin will then uh, create the pagination widget, even though there is no controller and no um, actual XBase extension available. So does this answer your question? Okay, cool. You seem to have a bit of a delay because the answer is a bit later. Um, so, are there any other questions? Anything we can help you with? Okay, so if there are not, then let me say, ah, was looking for this for a while now. Thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, thank you for watching and thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking questions that might have been interested interesting for other people too um i say goodbye for uh, for today and see you i think in yeah two days uh, where we will start our um side package series with the first episode and hopefully we will get some other formats as well thank you and bye <laughs>